Hey guys, this is John, and welcome to another episode of Chess Cognition. This is a game I played in 2014 at the Minnesota Open against National Master Wilson Gibbons, and we pick up the game after my 26th move. White responded to my last move with Queen to D3. Now it appears that Black has slightly more active pieces than White, uh, but ask yourself how should Black play? You could pause your video if you like, try to find the strongest continuation for Black. Okay, so in addition to black having slightly more active pieces in this even material position, one thing we also notice is that there are a couple pawn targets in white's position. You might consider the following pawns to be targets for my pieces, f2, e4, a3, especially e4. This is a, a focal point in the center. Uh, I'm attacking it with my queen and my light square bishop, and white is defending it with their queen and their light square bishop. a3 is also attacked by the black knight on c4, uh, White's bishop does control that a3 pawn. Uh, f2, I included that as a target because it's a pin pawn, and this will be relevant to our discussion coming up. So at first I looked at the simple queen takes d3 in this position. This is a normal queen trade. We swap, and after this we might consider ways to continue putting the pressure on white, and knight d6 would be a normal move to attack e4. Now we're attacking e4 with the knight and the bishop. Unfortunately for us, white can play f3, and in playing f3, they totally stabilize the pawn chain. I'm never going to be able to win that pawn on e4, and the position is roughly equal. So that was the very first line I looked at in this position, but I rejected it because it was too simple and white had a defense with f3. However, as we've talked about in the last couple chess cognition episodes, you have to get used to changing the move orders in your calculation and also trying to learn from the lines that you previously calculated in an effort to make your calculations more efficient. Uh, over time, as you calculate a position, you should, be, uh, being able, you should be able to calculate quicker and more accurately because you looked at ideas previously and you have some context for that calculation. So I knew that if I were to trade queens and allow white to reinforce that pawn with f3, I wouldn't be getting anywhere. However, if I instead play the move knight to d6, first before trading queens, then white is having issues because this pawn is now pinned because of my queen on d4, as it was in the starting position, so f3 is not possible. And if white were to swap on d4, queen takes d4, bishop takes d4, now our bishop takes up residence on this square, and it has the same, same effect as the black queen. We're pinning that pawn on f2. There's no f3 from white. And this pawn on e4 is a goner. It's getting attacked twice, and it only has chances of being defended once. Note that white's knight cannot help out because it would have to go to c3. That's a square covered by our bishop. So by virtue of simply changing the move order and playing knight d6, we are going to win that e4 pawn. Uh, in the game, white actually played e5 here, trying to offload the pawn and open up an attack on h7. But you may have seen this in your calculations. I can respond with queen takes d3, bishop takes d3, and then bishop takes e5, banking the pawn. And I was able to go on to win from here. One other line that you may have considered but also fails is bishop takes e4. This move from the beginning appears to be attractive because if uh, queen takes e4, then black has queen takes d1 check, picking up a pawn with check, and it looks like black might be achieving the same thing as in the game. However, if you saw the refutation to bishop takes e4, give yourself a pat on the back, the refutation is queen takes d4. Then after bishop takes d4, white is free to pick up the black bishop, and white is up a piece for a pawn, and winning. So this example kind of pulls together a couple things that we've talked about in the first two episodes of Chess Cognition, and that's changing the move orders around, getting used to looking at uh, different permutations of a good idea. In this case, the idea is attacking this pawn on e4, and also learning from lines you've previously calculated. So as it turns out, this e4 pawn is the focal point of the position. Uh, a3 a little bit less so, although if uh, the direct attacks against the e4 pawn had not worked, I probably look, would have looked at ways to attack a3. For instance, one move I was considering here was queen to a1, which is interesting. And I believe when I analyzed this, the computer said this was the second best move behind the move I played, knight d6. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this. And I'll be posting the PGN on chess.com. Feel free to check that out. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.